I have played platform fighters for a long time. And throughout the years, I've played a lot of characters. Whether it be because of mechanical design, or simply because I think they look cool. They've definitely had an impact on me, and I'd rather do a sort of appreciation for them. I have 10 games. Some of them have three characters I really like, some of them only have one. But all the same, they are my mains. And trust me, some of them are definitely going to be head scratchers. But however the case may be, just know that I have reasons why. So, let's start with the game that started my whole competitive career when it comes to platform fighters. Smash 4. Smash 4, along with Brawl, are definitely the black sheep when it comes to the franchise. Me, personally, I think Smash 4 is actually very underrated when it comes to the entire series. I like the neutral game, the slow pace of it all. A lot of mechanical depth that it had in the game. And to accompany this were the favorite characters I chose in this game. The first one I'm gonna talk about. Charizard. Charizard, or Lizardon, when it comes to Japan, is very interesting. He is beyond low tier that it's insane. But just like most of my mains in Smash 4, that didn't really mean a lot to me. See, when I started my college life in a place called Alfred State University, I went to like a sort of club where they actually played Smash Bros. What happened was is that I was depressed and I didn't really want to do a whole lot, so I only went to that club on most days. And what happened was because since I was so bored, I just decided to play a lot of different other sort of characters other than my mains. I tried Marth, I tried Pikachu, I even tried Dark Pit for a chance. But out of everyone, Charizard definitely felt like it was right for me. See, Charizard is heavy, but he can also fly, which does a lot for me. Because it means that I can not only space aerials appropriately with forward air and run back, but it also means that I can't die, usually. Usually takes like a very big punish in order for me to die. I can last. And because of that, playing neutral was very interesting because you had a character that even though you could make a lot of mistakes, you could, with the proper DI, still make it out. And with multiple jumps and a semi-decent recovery, it feels better than playing Ganondorf because I can actually get back on the stage. Above all else, I think it was the power that also really made me love this character. Not only can I play neutral, not only can I survive, not only can I have safe aerials, but with punishes because of me, I could really kill someone. And one of the most punishing moves that Charizard has was definitely back air for the time. Back air is okay when you consider it in Smash Ultimate, but in Smash 4, especially with the tipper that it had, it killed a lot of people, especially when you spaced it correctly. And as a character, I really enjoyed that because I didn't have the sort of brain and mindset in order to play someone like Mario or someone that's Fox that's very fast and mobile and has a lot of ways to open you up. I prefer to just wait until you made a bad play, and this character really made it fun in order to do that. And an added plus to being a Charizard main is that your cloud matchup is actually really good. There was memes about it, but yes, you can go on ledge, press B, and essentially the cloud main has no way to come back. Is it cheesy? Yes, but it gets the job done. It was actually kind of why I was very disappointed and what happened in Smash All New It. Because although he himself is quote unquote a better character, so is the rest of the cast because of the new engine. He's not as pace driven, he can't really survive as many attacks, his back air got nerfed severely. It kinda sucks. But for what he was in Smash 4, I appreciate it. Fun fact, one of my most favorite skins when it comes to Charizard in general in that game was definitely Purple Charizard. And I didn't know this, but apparently before he was black as a shiny, he was actually purple in the past games. So, that's pretty cool. I don't know what future he has in the inevitable Smash title that's gonna happen in the future, but... <sighs> I really miss him, man. But, to put on a positive note, let's go with the next character. I fucking love Dr. Mario in this game. Again, like Charizard, this game really incentivizes neutral for you. 
Dr. Mario's back air was so good at testing people's patience in that game. Slowly making their shield less and less until they invest it in a move where you can punish them. And when you get to punish them, god do you have a lot of ways you can do it. You have forward air, which like, I don't even know why it does that much damage and knockback. And his up B, which I do not know why it has this much good data on it. It looks so deceptively small until you actually battle it. And not only that, its recovery frames when you get down is actually pretty high. So using it just to like punish shields is kind of funny. Fun fact, this was back when I was in middle school, by the way, but I just called it like baking soda for some reason. And I don't know, maybe I just listened to the song too much, but I just, I'll just i just go up to someone doing shit and I'll just be like, BAKING SODA! And it's just, I don't know why I did it, it was just funny. Because of his slow nature and the fact that he can't recover as good, I really liked abusing the pills, especially when you include the back air, because it means it's very pace oriented, and, it, and you really check a lot of buttons when you do it. Especially when you charge a random forward smash and it just hits, it's just, it's just so funny. Dr. Mario may have been doo-doo water, but he was really a diamond in the rough in Smash 4. And if you had custom moves in that game, amazing. Going through this list is definitely making me a little too nostalgic. But all in all, Dr. Mario was great. But before we get on to the next game, let's talk about the final one. I have already talked about Smash 4 Falco in a previous video I made a long time ago. So I won't go on for too long. But basically, like all the rest, even though that Falco is very bad when it comes to being a character, his neutral game is just so amazing. A lot of his normals in that game are so long that it pokes everything and checks people on what they're going to do. You combine this with an air game that is very consistent and it makes it very good to play this character. Not like Smash Ultimate where it's like uh, he's kind of an air combo fiend. Like you'll get combos in Smash 4 but it's more so like a few strings maybe and then you might bait them with like a down air or something. What also makes it very apparent is just the few things that he has against other people. Even though down B isn't good as like a shine thing or whatever, just having it to deal with other people is pretty good. Down air and just hitting it by itself is just so amazing as well. Baiting air dodge in that game when it's so safe just to hit people and spike them into oblivion is something I can't recreate. If you want more information on Smash 4 Falco, again, I have a whole video about it. Maybe a little, maybe a little old, but it still works. I really miss this guy. I miss all of them, actually. But you know, that's how it is. The game's old. It makes sense. But you know what's not an old game? I definitely show my Smash Ultimate hating sleeve whenever I get the chance. However, there are a few characters in the game that I actually do have a great appreciation for. So let's start with the cool one. Ridley alone became one of my mains when I just saw how he looked. Every single attack from his down there to his smash attacks, everything looked fearsome. Added details like slamming people into the ground with side B just to prop them up made him just look so powerful, and I had and I just had to play him. In retrospect, he's not as good as he should be, but he's pretty fun for what he is. A back air has a pretty good kill move, forward air in order to check people's buttons, an up tilt that really gets every surrounding side. There are definitely some things I don't like, like down air. Or the fact that up B is not multi-directional like Fox's and it only goes like at certain angles which really fucks with them. I don't know why they did that. But the fear that his character design and how he plays just mixes too well for me not to appreciate him. He's great. I wish he was changed a little bit, but he's great. But not as great as this guy. I think this is like the genuinely first ever character that is better than mid-tier that I've ever played. And one of the best reasons why I even choose him is just because he does so much cool stuff. He just has a lot that he can use on other people. 
The blaster isn't like Fox. It's not a dinky thing to add percentage. It's, a it's an actual keep away tool. The amount of combo starters he can have with simple aerials and normals is just insane. Even though he doesn't have enough movement to be like Fox, the amount of horizontal movement that he can use against someone is just as good, making him outpace and outmaneuver some things if he really wanted to. Not only that, but a lot of the attacks that he has are just so satisfying. Back air, down air, up tilt, side tilt. There's just so many moves that either kill or just feel so meaty to just use against people. And the aesthetics paired with this sort of playstyle just makes it perfect. It's really the epitome of just a cool character. And it just feels so bad that he's tied with a game that I just don't want to play regularly. But hell, if he's so fun. And I'm gonna miss him dearly when they get rid of him in the next game. But for the time that I did have with him, it was great. I think what we should do now is stop talking about Smash for a bit. Let's talk about a different franchise. Let's talk about Slap City. Slap City is severely underrated, man. Has good mechanics, has a good roster, the single player and other type of modes are just fantastic. <sighs> I feel so bad for it. But, to give it a little appreciation, let me tell you about the few characters that I main in this game. One of them that I have talked about in the past. Goddess of Explosions is great, and there's two reasons why. One is how her gameplay is, and then the other is just her personality. In gameplay, she's fantastic. Has a lot of moves that feel very powerful once you hit them. The clutch button makes a lot of different animations and moves really be impactful. There's some special stuff in her toolkit, like a ball of fire, that even the opponent can hit. She has everything. She's destructive. She has a lot of momentum. She has everything. And though I could go on for a little more, I'd rather talk about the more impactful thing for me. See, she's very boisterous when it comes to her trailer and a lot of different moves that she has. But in the story mode, there is a lot more things you can know about her. She calls herself in the story mode a, what's it called? An omnipotent stud, ah yes. But we see in her story mode that even though she acts this way towards the other people, when it comes to her family, she understands them and she has a caring side to her. She understands their pain, she understands what they're going through, and she has faith that even if her children aren't grown up in order to be by her side and rule with her, that at least that they can do a future of their own volition. Sometimes she realizes that she's wrong or maybe she made a few mistakes on the way. And you know, for what it is, even though she's like that, she has a side to her that is appreciated. With that ball of anger and excitement and fire, is also a mother. A mother that, even though she has pride, she still loves her family. And a lot of the depth that you were to give her, you can also give a lot of the Slap City characters. I just find it very human, the fact that I think of her one way when it comes to her gameplay, but with, you know, the story mode and things like that, you notice ticks in the armor and you can see what's really inside. It's really appreciated, so much so that I made, you know, a power scaling video about it just because I thought it was so interesting. Hell, maybe in the future I'll make a versus battle with her. I just... There's a lot to this character, a lot more than people think. And although I really do, I really do enjoy her, how she plays, I like how she is better. I really appreciate Goddess of Explosions. And I hope you do too. However, if you do wanted to talk about gameplay, I got a character for you. Cruiser Tetron is a bastard, and I love him. The design is foreboding, he looks menacing, he's great. And what I just love is that every single move has power. Whether it's hitting people with the ball of your foot, grabbing the opponent backwards, or just full sending a forward smash. Every single attack he has has some weight and some real good power to it. 
And I like characters where the biggest game plan is to actually try to predict where the opponent is and hit him with one big move. So it's great for me. In conjunction, um, because I was researching a lot for the Goddess of Explosions video, I actually turned to looking at my main a lot more. I looked at the game he was from, I looked at some of the lore, and I actually thought it was a little more interesting than most. Just the fact that he was a dictator able to control like different parts of this sector of technology used against the hero, it, it's pretty fun. Also, just like a little tidbit, I was actually going to put Cruiser Tetron against someone, but the problem is, is that I didn't really have a lot of information in order to go off of it. The only thing to really tell about his power is that he has something called the Star Eaters, and like that's really the only thing you have as an AP thing, and it's and it's all word of mouth. Was a little disappointed about that one because I genuinely love him, and he's like my number one when it comes to this game. But wh whatever, whatever, it was fine. I'm not angry. But yeah, Cruiser Tetron is great, and I really love him. He got the great character design, his moves are fun, and his lore is at least a little interesting. God, I miss this character. Rush Down Revolt is a very underrated series. Good mechanics, it's free now, it plays very cool. I, I kinda I kind of wish the visuals were better, but you know, whatever. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the characters. Look at this beast. Look, look, look at him. Look at him. He's huge. Quite literally the biggest character in the game. And what makes it even funnier is when you see him cancel moves into each other. This is like seeing Vegeta go into great eight mode. Imagine this amount of muscle going this fast. Although he does get comboed into oblivion sometimes, the amount of aggression that you can put to an opponent is just too satisfying to ignore. Also, just look at his design. It's so terror-filled, monster-like. It's amazing. I think other than his moves, one of the most interesting parts about this character is the fact that he actually has meter. As you attack and defend yourself, this meter is going to go up. And if you press a special, it'll actually turn into a quote-unquote EX version of the move. With a level one, you'll be able to get some sort of key blast. But with four bars, you're able to summon Nagasaki. Barring that, the range and aggressiveness of the normal buttons are still amazing. However, even though I love him a whole lot, he's not my favorite. Now, I've already covered Erda in a previous video, so if you want a little more detail, you can go over there. So I'll keep it really simple. The reason why I love Erda is because she's a grappler that's also very mobile. Usually, grapplers don't have a lot of ways to get in. She does. And when she gets in, she can do a lot of creative things. When she grabs in, she can put you into something called Karu Throw, which does a lot of special properties depending on what you do. Mix-ups, kill, power, setups, it's amazing. But I go in way more detail about it when it considering the other video. So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. But one thing I didn't really go over was definitely her design. It's definitely very out there. It's very traditional attire. It has a lot of spikes and aura filled sort of arms in order to like enhance power. I don't know if that means anything when it comes to lore. I have no idea about the lore, but it's definitely interesting to talk about. I love Torment and I love Erda. They're amazing. Ooh, I get to talk about my boy. Sylvanas so is very special to me, and I can break it down into three ways. One, how he looks. Two, how he plays. Three, his lore. How he looks was just so unique at the time. We've had quadrupeds before in Smash Bros, specifically like Ivysaur, but it's not like Sylvanas at all. Sylvanas is a wolf, meaning that there's a lot more quality traits that you can show compared to the other guy. Teeth, fangs, claws. All aspects in order to make him seem like a monster. And the animations also do him justice. A vinewood with a spike at the end of the tip. A huge biting maw for side B when it comes to beast boost. And even his smash attacks. All making him look like a very vicious creature. How he plays is a little interesting because he's very aggressive but he also has these long range pokes. 
Meaning he definitely wants to check you out if you're doing sort of unsafe moves so that he can head on and hit you with a combo. Also, his plants have a lot of ingenuity with them. Whether it be from the ground or the air, you can cancel them into other moves. This makes Savano's a very good glass cannon. Able to rack up damage usually, even more so than most other characters. But because he's so long, the way that his disadvantage works is that it all ties together. Now all this together are good on its own, but me personally, I like going in a little bit more with people that are my favorites, and his lore is very interesting. I talked about it a little with my Sylvanas vs. Gormagala video, but uh, again, I'll say a few things here. Sylvanas existed way before any other Aether creature, and he only really attacked people because a lot of his land was getting like burned or used in other sort of resources. And it was until that point that he started becoming a more vicious beast against every single Aether creature. So much so that every single other person had to delegate him to his sort of space and it was just agreed upon that no one goes over there or you will die. Rather than a villain, it really makes Sylvanos a force of nature. Kinda like Godzilla in a few movies. He's not really there in order to try to cause evil, he's just there because of circumstances. It's like a tornado, you don't really blame a tornado for existing, you just try to analyze to see how it came to where it is. So yes, Sylvanos is very fearsome, but a lot of the things that he does is like, you know, an animal. It's not, it, I can't really blame him too much. It makes him a lot more interesting, and it's, and it's even better considering the fact that how he looks and how he plays is already good enough. There just isn't any other character like Sylvanos. I just love him so much. If this was like a top tier list, he would definitely be either top three or maybe even top one. But enough of the serious nature. Let's get a little goofy. Imagine having so many mains be cool and terrifying and like sort of villainous just to see Octodad show up. But it's true, I really enjoy Octodad in this game. He's very bubbly, he's very soft, it's sort of wholesome in a sense. And a lot of the attacks that you could use on someone, especially with his sound effects, they're just funny as hell. I've never actually played the game itself, or at least the original game of Octodad. Uh, I've only really seen like um, YouTubers actually do him, but I, fr from what I can gather, it's a pretty funny and wholesome series. Now how he plays is very interesting, because it's like Sylvanos, but all the time, and also you're rewarded for spacing. See, in Rivals 1, spacing can literally just be ignored because the parry button exists, but because of what it is in Frame Makers, you're actually rewarded for doing it properly. So spacing safe aerials against someone is actually more fun to do in this game. Another thing is the tippers can really extend combos, kind of like a pseudo Marth type of thing. If you hit the tipper, you get a lot of time in order to extend combos with Octodad, making his combo game seem beautiful. And when you pair with certain mechanics that the game has, like air dashing, oh my god. I just love this little goofball, man. Hopefully one day frame makers can actually be done so I can have a lot more players to play with and so I can, you know, give a lot of my good props to them. But in the meantime, I appreciate the fact that you made this character, man. It's so cool. So, I talked about Stardust Valkyries for a long time. And I guess this is an interesting moment in order to show people who I love very much so in this game. And, uh, it's Minkata. Just like the rest of the mains, just have a cool devious character with you, and I'll probably choose them. Half woman, half spider. Dark Souls is coming with a warrant. The design is just so unique. I've never seen like a realistic portion of an undercarriage of a spider mixed with this in a platform fighter. If that's crazy, you should see some of her moves. Look at this forward air. It's fucking miles long, dude. And yeah, every single person in this game has a shine, but her shine is so different. Rather than being a move that just straight up ends, it just stays there. Like an actual web to a fly, it just stays there waiting just waiting for the next victim. And when it does, you're fucked. 
See, I play her very aggressively, so I don't really like using the sort of side B off wall, do a sort of, you know, webs at the thing so you can't interact with it. I don't really like doing that because it's not fun. But with being so aggressive, you know, because you're so big, you get hit by a lot of things. But it's so amazing to play this character. Double naring people just to like predict where they're going to go and hit them with a very powerful move is just amazing. And grabbing people off stage just to send them 700 miles below is just funny. She's definitely a very hard character to master, especially since she's so big that she can get hit with everything. But the amount of creativity and the amount of fun that you can have, it doesn't even register for me. Nasb2 has gotten a lot of uh, very weird opinions throughout the years. Not re necessarily wrong ones, but you know, weird ones. Is it good? Is it bad? Nah, nah, nah. I think it's fine for what it is. I wish the graphics and like a lot of the hit stun and hit pauses were a little better so that, you know, it'd be a lot more enjoyable. Overall, it's a good experience. But if I had to play Nasb2 again, there is one character that comes to mind. Reptar. Reptar has three things just like Sylvanos for why I like him so much. One, his design, or specifically his show reason. Second of all, how he plays. And third of all, his story mode presentation. Reptar is so weird because we know for a fact he was based on Godzilla, and that's kind of the, you know, you know the point. And just so out of place. Green ass lizard, dorsal planing, a few claws. It's weird as hell. But every single time that I did see him in the Rugrats, I kinda in my brain and my heart wanted him to be somewhere else. Whether it be in like a traditional fighting game or something like that, I, I, I felt like he was cool enough where he could be somewhere else. And the fact that Nasb2 exists and put him in is so amazing. Maybe this is a hot take or like the wrong opinion for this, but I feel like Reptar is probably the first gorilla to ever be in a platform fighter. Now that might be sounding strange because it's like a gorilla. You mean like you mean like Donkey Kong? No, 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 not not like that. I mean gorilla in like a fighting game sense. Just like Gramblers, there's some traits that gorillas have that make them what they are. Usually they tend to have larger hitboxes and health pools, but it's not always the case. What's a big thing about gorillas is that they usually have big buttons and usually have frame traps. So they're gonna hit you with very safe aerials to catch you off guard, make you think that you're plus and you're not, and then just hit you. This to me pairs really well with what Reptar is trying to do. Even though he was nerfed, a lot of the aerials and a lot of the moves that he can do on shield are very safe and actually pushes people away. So it's not like the sense of big body characters in other platform fighters because you can't just shield to get grabbed. If you shield, you're getting pushed away. So to me, this seems like the epitome philosophy of what a gorilla is. This pairs with the fact that he is so fun to play. Down airing to kill anyone, his up B is very safe, or you can make it even safer with slime canceling. A ton of his aerials and a ton of his, you know, grounded sort of aerials are still safe. His fire mechanic is, although simple, very fun in order to maintain. He's just fun. And the fact that on Twitter there was like a whole sort of discussion series about why they made him how he is, it's just a testament to how good of a design they tried to make him. I have my own opinions when it comes to Nasby 2. I think there's a lot of things they could have done better. I think there's a lot of things that people overlook, however. However, at the end of the day, just the fact that Reptar is in this game is enough for me. All right, that was the whole thing, everyone. This is, this was so long. But even so, I enjoyed making it, and I really hope that a lot of people have sort of a new appreciation, not just for the mains, but also where the games where they come from. I don't really like being that guy, but unfortunately life is going in a different turn for me right now, so I have a Patreon for anyone who's interested. I don't have really that many rewards right now because I'm trying to get some suggestions, but either way, they're up for anyone that wants to support me. I'm trying to do my best in order to give a lot of people consistent content, and these sorts of things can influence me in order to do that. But other than that, enough about me. How about you give me a comment down below on your favorite main in your fighting game? It could be a platform fighter, traditional fighter, it doesn't really matter. We're all fighting game players at the end of the day. 
Because ever since doing the Grappler video and doing the gimmick video, a lot of people have shown me a lot of their taste when it comes to fighting games. So knowing more is just fun at the end of the day. But other than that, I'll see you next time.